Hey, welcome back to the shop here at Hemmings where it is finally summertime, which means we can finally get the cool cars out and start going to shows and going on road trips. And that's been great. The only thing is the heat waves that have come through already have made us a little nervous. Our Chevy pickup here does great out on the road, but when the AC's on and the temp goes up, the needle on the temperature gauge starts to hover a little too far to the one side. We're gonna be putting a new radiator in that today. And we're also gonna take the opportunity to talk about some cooling system tips and tricks, some variations in radiators and other things you should know to make sure you don't have to worry about overheating when you hit the road this summer. So you said this thing really didn't get hot until the weather got hot, right? Yeah, once we started hitting 90 degrees, turning on the AC, pulling a nice long hill, it wasn't getting really hot, but 210, 215, it's a little hotter than I would like to see. Something like this, you know, small block Chevy, uh, 190 to me is a good temp. So I basically just took a look inside the radiator and I think I discovered the two things that are giving us problems. One, this is a two-core radiator. As far as I understand it, AC trucks should have a three-core radiator. So right off the bat, the radiator is too small. But not only that is we have a lot of calcification in the tubes, which tells me right off the bat that somebody was using tap water. You don't want to use tap water in your radiator system. It is not good for them. Distilled water, or even better, is buying the pre-mixed 50-50. I know we don't like buying water, but it is treated water specifically to deal with the pressures and the temperature of a radiator system. All right, so we're gonna just swap this one out because it's obviously, not only is it old, but it's not even really the right one for the truck. Correct, as far as I understand it, yes. Okay. So you've got this thing drained, so we're just gonna pull it out, right? Yep. So here's our new radiator. We got this from US Radiator, and it's essentially a high quality replacement. It's a brass copper design like the original, but this is a three row where our original was a two row. This also uses US Radiator's high efficiency core, which has more fins per square inch and just does a better job of moving heat out of the coolant. Now, as you can see, it's got the transmission cooler in the tanks, and this is a standard one-pass radiator. US Radiator also offers a thing called the triple pass, where they put dams inside the tanks, which cause the coolant to come in, flow to the other side, drop down, flow back, drop down again, and flow across one more time. That really offers a lot of cooling. We have one of those in our big block Chevelle, and it works really well. This is a fairly straightforward replacement, but we really like US Radiator stuff. We've used it in other cars. It's real high quality. But here's the thing. These days, if you were to go to the auto parts store to get a replacement for our Chevy truck, you probably wouldn't wind up with a brass copper radiator. Unfortunately, the industry has kind of moved away from this design. And what you're likely to get is something like this. This is the radiator out of our IROC Camaro. This is typical of what you'd find in most cars now, and in fact, a lot of replacement radiators for old cars come out of the box like this. This is an aluminum core with plastic tanks. They're crimped together on the ends. This is, again, what most cars use now, but these aren't super durable, and they're basically disposable. When we took this out of the IROC, we put in a brass copper radiator from US Radiator, and it works really well. Another alternative is the welded aluminum radiator. The aftermarket's been building these for a long time. US Radiator makes these, this is not one of theirs. The welded tanks and the welded core tend to be pretty strong, and you can pick these up pretty reasonably. It's a good alternative, but we really like brass copper radiators, and they're very hard to get these days, so we're glad that US Radiator has continued to manufacture those right here in the United States. One more note on our replacement radiator. Because this is designed as a direct replacement for the factory piece, the transmission cooler is in the tank, just like the original. If you opt to go to a triple pass design radiator for your car, just know that the trans cooler will have to move to an external unit. 
This is ready to go in, so we're gonna get it over in the truck and drop it right into place. All right, the beauty of GM products is a lot of them, if not most of them in this time frame, all use the same system for clamping in the radiator. It's just a top, sometimes it's a full cover, but the important part is there's a rubber saddle that goes in here. Ours was completely broken. I didn't realize this, I didn't buy one ahead of time. But again, the beauty of GM is I pulled one out of our stash, which I believe this was for a Corvette, Quick modification just because it was longer, but they're pretty much all the same. And you really don't want to overlook these rubbers because they hold the entire radiator in place. So if the rubber's not good, your radiator can rattle around, wear spots, next thing you know you have a hole. Our Chevy truck's got a nice big full-size fan shroud on it. Fan shrouds are really important. They help direct the air that the fan is pulling over the radiator core. And usually the factory ones cover the entire core. Uh, now, if you go back into the 70s and in the 60s, a lot of times you find cars that did not have air conditioning did not come with a fan shroud. But if you've got a modern hot rod, even if it's a car from the 50s, if you've put a hotter engine in it and you're having cooling issues and you don't have a shroud, you should probably get one. If one's not available for your car, they're not that hard to make. If your fan shroud in your car is broken, it's worth getting another one because again, the direction of air over the core makes a huge difference. One other thing to keep in mind here, our air conditioned truck has a clutch fan. If you're running a clutch fan, make sure your clutch is in good shape. They do wear out and when they start to slip, that's another thing that can cause you cooling issues. All right, we got this thing pretty much bolted back in. One note, we did discover after we put the fan shroud in, that it was rubbing on the core. Now, this is a three core, remember, we had a two core in here before. So Junior just cut off uh, bottom of the shroud. It wasn't really even all the way down. No, it looked like it's a two piece that's stapled together. I think over time, it just kind of heated and warped. So the bottom of the shroud was right up against the radiator. So trim that little half inch off the bottom so it would bolt up. Now it sits nice and flush with a very minimal gap to the radiator. So a good thing to always check when you're putting a new radiator in is make sure yeah. the shroud is not rubbing right on the yeah. fins and the tubes. Correct. And we should be good now with the shroud, so all that's left is to fill it up, right? Yep, and we'll top it up with antifreeze, and we'll run the truck and burp any air out of it. We're also gonna check our transmission fluid since we disconnected the oil cooler and spilled a little bit there. And you do wanna be careful nowadays, there are so many different antifreezes on the market. You wanna stick with just one. Don't be mixing them, especially when it comes to inorganic. Inorganic, that's when you get that nasty sludge that will block everything. So I've got some 50-50 ethylene glycol here. The water that's in this is actually treated. It is pH neutral, it's mineral neutral. Distilled water, because it is completely empty of any minerals, will actually draw minerals out of the engine, out of the cooling system, whether it's aluminum or the iron or anything else, it's trying to replace that into distilled. So you're actually better off buying water. All right, we've topped off our coolant system, and I would just like to say, keyword is system. One thing that's often overlooked is radiator caps. Now, there are many different types and styles of radiator caps. You can go from four pounds, seven pounds, 15, 16, I think they go up into the 20s nowadays. So if you keep it under pressure, just roughly, I believe, every pound is another 20 degrees of temperature. So you can have too much or too high of a pressure on your radiator cap, and now you're overpressurizing your system and you risk blowing things up. So this truck here is supposed to be 15 PSI. We've got a nice new radiator cap from US Radiator. This is also a closed system, which means it has a purge tank. 
Closed system radiator caps are different. When it cools down, the initial gasket actually releases and it pulls coolant back out of your overflow. And so you don't want to mix an open system with a closed system radiator cap because it will just keep filling up your purge tank and it won't draw it back into the system. So it's key to keep coolant in your overflow. They're usually marked on the side cold and hot because every time your system cools down, it draws coolant back in. All right, the new radiator is installed. That was pretty straightforward, but we now have a three-row high-efficiency core with our US radiator unit, whereas the stock one was a two-row. It's all topped off with coolant. We're ready to go. All that remains is to go for a test drive. And it's like 90 degrees outside today, so it's gonna be a real good test to see how much more capacity we have with the new unit. Keep an eye here on the Hemmings YouTube channel to see what we work on next, and also watch our socials to see what else we have going on. Thanks everybody for watching, we'll see you in the next one. Yeah. Yeah.